So dear Dhamma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body and keep your back straight and neck head straight in one line. And your right palm on your left hand, gently close your eyes, please. And then focus your mind to this bell sound. And while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind, and relax your breathing with your thoughts. Do nothing extra. Just follow the sound, please. Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasu Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasu Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasu Homage to the Blessed One the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So keep your right palm on your left and neck it straight in one line. Bring your attention to your body. And scan head to toes three times yourself and say, Sopatveva, or may I be well and happy three times. Take a moment and think. We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge. In this moment, with this sitting, may my body become more comfortable. May my breath be more smooth. May no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. Also, think for a moment. This is the last moment we are spending in this very lifetime. And detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment, observe, observing the, the sensation of your inhalation, exhalation, and then later observe the, the impermanent, unsatisfactory nature and selflessness within any experience, any sensation come to you. So in the beginning, we're going to relax our body step by step. So mentally relax your body following my words. Relax your head. Relax your forehead. Relax your eyebrows. Relax your eyes. Relax your ears. Relax your nose. Relax your upper lip. Relax your lower lip. Relax your chin. Relax your whole face muscles. Relax your teeth. Relax your tongue. Relax your mouth. Relax your throat. 
relax your neck. Relax your shoulders, arms, elbow, forearms, palms, fingers, fingertips. Relax your back and relax your spine. Relax your chest and relax your abdominal muscles. Relax your lungs, relax your heart, relax your liver, relax your kidneys, relax your gold blood, relax your pancreas, relax your small intestine. Relax your large intestine. Relax your abdominal organs. Relax your butter. Relax your thigh. Relax your knee. Relax your calf muscles. Relax your foot and relax your toes. Relax your whole body muscles, tendons, ligaments, bone, bone marrows and whole skeleton. Release the tension in your mind and keep relax your face muscles. Bring your attention to in front of your nose and your upper lip area. And deeply and gently breathe in, breathe out three times and find the sensation, please. And allow your inhalation, exhalation to happen naturally. And when it happened through the sensation, recognize this is inhalation, this is exhalation. And develop the stillness and undisturbed mind. And settle down with the, the sensation of your inhalation, exhalation. If your mind go here and there, bring it back again and again.
follow the entire continuation of the inhalation, exhalation. Knowingly, this is the beginning, this is the middle, this is end of the inhalation or exhalation. And also you may experience some inhalation, exhalation become longer, shorter, heavy, soft, warm, cold. Just recognize it. Drop all the details related to inhalation, exhalation. Just observe the sensation and see the change. Not only the object, the observer also change moment by moment. Just recognize it.
Bring your attention to your body and observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. Also, as far as you can, through galaxies, other planets, stars, Reminding yourself like this, with clear intention, mentally, repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe and may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Beings who are pale or strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away, already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. To your backside. To your left side, and to your right side, downward.
and upward. To all six directions at once. Like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it with the maximum effort to the highest, wishing yourself May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. Say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So dear Dhamma practitioners, in this human existence, we are more bound to the time, history, culture, tradition, believings, and the religions, so like that. From the ancient time to today, people try to find their security and try to find their good life with the, the ideas they, they carry within themselves. So that is what who we are. It's not even for today, in the ancient time also, if you go to the, the Greek, even ancient Indian, even to the Parao, Egyptian, this you, when you go to that history, Mohindo, Jaro, Harappa, anyway, you will see that they had the dream to be immortal. They have to, they had a dream to be immortal with whatever the things that they had. Even that today, when they find out kind of like a mummies and when they digging this all the earth and when they find out ruins, they find out with the treasure and the, all the family members buried in the same place and uh, sometimes not the, the one person, the king and all the servants and all the ministers around the king and they buried in, buried in the same place. And all the material things, they bur buried in the same place. Why? Because they believe they're going to come back with the same power, same facilities, and the same kind of followers or the believings. And still, even though we don't have that much material wealth, we are the same. We also do the same thing in day-to-day -day life. If you look very carefully within your own personal life, what you try to do every day, you already have an image yourself within your own life and you try to find that security 
and you try to find a very safe place for that self image and it go it that is where the struggle happens so then when it come to normal life what is the meaning of normal life because the dharma is try to help you to have a normal life so when it come to normal life mean you get out of the imagination so from where the imagination come so the normal life mean you go with the time not you separate from the time so the time is uh, it is not the chronological time that we talk here the chronological time is the the time you see through the clock is a reflection of your thoughts or your life so there is a psychological time inside us we bound to that we cannot escape from it look at yourself you are bound to that time that's why there is a struggle in you so when you bound to the time what happens when you bound to the time the thought arise related to past or the future because in the very present moment you are normal in that normal state you have no thoughts related to past or the future just the the moment of experience you have why because when it come to sensual perception that mean whatever you see through your eye ear nose tongue body mind when you have this sensual perception in that very moment what is happening deeper inside you as a human being what we introduce form feeling sensation formations recognition form so when you have a sensual perception with your eye ear nose tongue body mind in that very moment what is happening the form feeling sensation formations recognition happens in that very moment what is happening with this five aggregates there is a unitary moment in the same direction at once there is a unitary movement unitary movement mean so like my my hand so if i hold this bottle like this hmm, this all my five fingers come to a one point and to the same object to hold it it is not one finger separate from other four but at the same time this each and every finger separate but it all go to the same object so like that your form feeling sensation formation recognition so the form is the name and form is that that is where you recognize something that recognition come out of the the eye ear nose tongue body and mind so this unitary moment happening at the same time to the same direction not to go something go here something or form happening here and the your uh, sensation happening somewhere else or the the formation or the your past thoughts happening somewhere else or your understanding happening separate no this everything happen at once so when it come to the moment if we few able to recognize the the moment of this again and again you going to be normal so but the thing is when something happens in the very moment with the sensual perception what happening we jump to past or the future so that mean you separate from the timeline so you separate from the timeline you start to create a psychological time which is not real so your past and your future is a psychological time which is not real but in the middle of that psychological time there is a, the through time period that is what the 
the the true sensual experience so when it come to something you say that knowledge or oh, i know something mostly we we in day to day life we say thing oh, i know i know something so that what you know mostly come out to out of the sensual perception and uh, by your past memory without sensual perception or without related to past memory there is no knowledge so then when you have an idea i know something how you know it is true it is true or it is your imagination so the reason is this the truth always exists in the present moment truth cannot exist as idea truth cannot exist as imagination truth cannot exist in the past or the future you can experience something as truth only in the present moment see now what we know as truth is in conventional life it is just the it's a kind of like a table cover when you put a cover on table you don't you not going to see the the table but there is no any carpenter create a table table top thinking oh forget about the sharpening and cleaning and making a clear design to this table why because whoever buy this they going to put a cover do you think like that table you going to buy no there is no any carpenter no no any the furniture shop selling a table telling you or oh, you buy this it doesn't matter this ugly shape or the ugly surface because why you can buy a good table cover no it should come with the very natural clear way but when it come to our life so what you know is kind of like a table cloth because the moment of experience is the only experience only real thing come to be with you but what is happening we addicted to to develop or create kind of like a psychological time inside us related to our personal experience so this is what happening when you go with the psychological time so first you bound to thoughts so you when you create a psychological time so you bound to thoughts it's kind of like chemical and once you bound to thoughts it create form so the form bring the image so the image bring the imagination when you have imagination you are in a illusion so that is how it goes so if you bound to psychological time related to past or the future that's mean related to thoughts and you develop forms so the form become image there is no image without a form so that image bring the imagination that is where you can think about past and the future oh i used to be like this i used to be like that and also i going to be like this this all imagination that imagination itself a illusion so what is happening when you have this illusion and it start to create a kind of like a chemical in you so that chemical itself become a food for your life and then what is happening you start to disconnect from the the normal life so the dharma is trying to help you so when it come to help that mostly we think that help help mean is a is a way that as example if you ask help that's mean you try to to 
you try to find your comfort zone. But remember, when it comes to the dharma, the help means you tune to the, the present moment or the normal moment of your life. So when you come to the normal state of your mind, when you come to the normal state of your life, what is happening? That is, in that very moment, there is no imagination in your life. So when there is no imagination, what happening? You get out of the fear. What is the fear means? False, image, appearance, real. So whatever imagination come as real to you, deeper in you. And then you start to have the resistance. So that is what happening in day-to-day -day life. Our own imagination start to add, sabotage ourselves. And then we have the fear struggling and go be resisting again and again. And it becomes stronger, stronger, stronger inside us. So the meditation is a method. That's why we say in the beginning, in, when it comes to tranquility meditation, develop a solid mind, undisturbed mind. What does that mean? Don't jump to past or the future. Don't caught up in this imagination in your mind. So once you come to the present moment, that doesn't mean you shut down your mind. You don't, doesn't go kind of like a paralyzed state. You, you not become kind of like a numb. So you come to a moment, you tune to the, the tune to the, the journey. It's kind of like a flow, flowing river. You go with the, the moment of experience rather than going to the past or the future. So once you tune to that moment of the, the river or the journey or the change, you slowly start to detach from thoughts. So that is the, the, the tranquility state. That is why it's called undisturbed mind. Why? Because you get disturbed out of your own mind. Observe that. Do some exercise yourself and recognize it. That recognition will help you to develop your conventional life. And also it will become a very good foundation for your spiritual life also. Remember that undisturbed mind means not shutting down outside, not become silent uh, in a silence place, not allow others to, to stay away from you. No, the undisturbed mind means you become more tuned to the present moment of the change and you go with the, that rather than caught up in the past or the future. That is where your mind become more sharp and clear. So when it comes to that clarity, what happening, you start to recognize that whatever happening in you not with the outside, whatever happening inside you, the experiencer, yourself, you are deeper inside, is the, not the same. So once you see that it is not the same, you don't look for immortal life. You don't look for unchangeable existence. Why? Because you recognizing the experience of moment by moment, moment by moment change. That recognition itself is the, the most important recognition that if you can reach. But mostly what happening, when we depending from the time, when we become prisoner to time, when we go with the, the, the time and trying to struggle to reach to, to whatever we want or whatever we try to hold or whatever we try to create. And when we have a struggle with the time, 
it always become a dream for us. So that's where that we, we mostly have dreams in life. So then remember yourself. Maybe you have many, many thoughts in you. You have, you, you, you try to do many things. But at the same time, if you're not settling down, if you don't see the present moment, it always going to become just a dream. But rather than focusing to something, if you able to see the very moment and see the capacity and where you are and how you exist in this very moment, once you tune to that, you will see your future naturally itself. So then it become normal to you. And even you start to recognize how you came to this moment. That means your past, you're going to see it. So the seeing pa your past naturally, seeing your future naturally related to the present moment is a different knowledge. But what we does mostly, we disconnect from the present moment and try to imagine and try to create and try to dream regarding past or the future. That itself bring the, the difficulties to our life. So then remember, observe deeply yourself through this sansara, this is keep happening to us again and again and again and again. We trying to, to be the same person as who we are, but we try to look for change from outside world. It will never going to happen to us. But when it come to analytical meditation, that means vipassana meditation, the most important part that you have to remember, when you need the success in your life, conventionally, even with your spiritual practice, always remember to be a person ready to change. Change your ideas. Don't afraid for that. Change your ideas. Change your direction. Change your behavior. Change your patterns. Change your bodily, verbally, mentally actions. According to what? According to the necessary conditions in that very moment. It is very difficult. That is where you become formless. That is where you become characterless, passionless. Why? Because you become a person completely like wind, like the water, like the, the air. Shapeless. You cannot come to a form or the shape. When you have that behavior, naturally what is happening? Your mind is start to get out of the forms because that form creates the image. That image bring you the imagination. That imagination create the illusion. So once you become a person ready to change according to necessary conditions, especially with, for the good for others. So as example, as a husband, wife, children, friends and families, when a situation come and mostly sometimes People think that hold into strong, solid ideas is the, the best way. No. When according to the necessary situations, according to your culture, according to your tradition, according to your believing, according to your religion, and sometimes you think this should be like this. But how we know from where this start? And maybe for a different reason, they start that, but we are today holding it with the different reason. When we look at the human history, this lot of things came to human world, especially food or some believing system. By mistake, they start to do that. And but now today it became a part of our life. And now we carry it as our life, but it is start with the, the, the wrong mistake. So like that, we don't know from where this came, but we like to keep repeating it. We, keep, we like to keep repeating it. Deeply, there is a 
psychological behavior within yourself. There is psychological chemical in you that when you repeat that, even the ideas, even the dreams, even the thoughts, you feel so comfortable. You feel so energized. You feel kind of like uh, you are solid. But remember, that is where it bringing you another, the start, another, the life, another existence. But when it comes to the Buddha's teaching and he introduced us this method, the completely eradicate, not to find the solid, comfortable place to exist. Because when it comes to most of the other religions, that is what it tried to introduce us. This is I am. Are you going to be safe if I reach to this? So like that, with the self-centered mind or the self-centered idea, imagination, it tried to find a very safe place. But what the Buddha mentioned? The Buddha mentioned that you completely come to a point to shut down everything. That is what called the Nibbana. So when it comes to that, where you should start the journey? Start from your behavior. When you want to, to find something successful, so what you, how you can get the this Nibbana or the enlightenment influence to your day-to-day -day activities. Remember this very carefully. When a situation comes, if it is go wrong or if it is become difficult, then you think. The very first thing that you have to do, change your behavior. Try tomorrow. You will see. Change the way you think, not the outside. Change the way you action. Change the way you believe. That change is very difficult. If you look very carefully, when you try to change something, the mostly that change we think outside world. No, it is inner change. When you have, when you change that your inner behavior, you get out of the passion. You get out of the, the, the imagination that you carry your self-imagination as who you are. So that is where you have to start. And once you're able to change yourself, that you will see outside start to change unbelievably. And it's going to bring some kind of the peace, happiness, tranquility state to you. And other people feel more security, more comfortable with you. And when we say loving kindness, may all living beings be well and happy. Just imagine, if you cannot change your own ideas behalf of others' good, others' happiness, others' comfort, what's the point? We just say all living beings be well and happy. And maybe you're watching TV. And you at the same time, mostly, you know, at home you have one TV. So maybe another that you watching the TV and another person need to like to watch something at the same time. And you know, once you feel, if you don't know, it is okay. But in case, what I'm telling, if you feel that, oh, my husband, my wife, my child want to, to watch that. What do you have to do? Just let them to to watch that. If you cannot, just imagine, behalf of your house, it is not the neighborhood, it is not the, you know, Boko Haram from, you know, African countries. Your husband, your wife, your child, you know, your parents at home, your brother, sister. So if you cannot change a channel, behalf of other person, good or happiness, Forget about enlightenment. Just because it is very simple, practical thing. Why we cannot do that? Because we disconnect from the present moment. I just gave that one single example. Even you sitting in the, on the couch and maybe on the sofa and another person come and you feel like that person need this place. Give it. That giving is not just a physically you move. 
you challenge to your inner passion and sometimes you eating and maybe you eating something that other person feel that you you feel like that other person likes so give it that is that is where at home even you no need to go to jungle at home itself you developing your inner nature and destroying your this self imagination your immortal behavior and remember we all came here with the with the naked body with the empty hand so you have to you have to come to a point die empty die without any single thought that is the that is where you going to you going to reach to the the highest if there is nothing don't don't hope anything something will happen after you die forget about that everything you have to end before you die so then we don't know when we going to die so then what where you, we have to start we have to start from here right now so so then in day to day life you have to go moment by moment moment by moment sacrificing releasing and don't hold it to anything so deeply personally practice it in your mind little by little you're not going to lose anything you know you're not going to become homeless you're not going to become having a hard time no just you you practice then you will see there are a lot of things that start to come towards you it it become a challenge but while you hold it to something even even regarding your own self image you losing and you missing a lot of things in your life so because we become more comfortable with the the our comfort zone so this practice especially when it come to vipassana it is not uh, just a mental practice yourself for a while you know sitting and un, uh, with the unmovable posture it is day to day life deeply you seeing your own mind and you go with the change and you become like the wind inside you become like the fire selfless when you watch the fire you can see there is no shape it's always change and it's it's kind of like the water so whatever the situation come it adapt to it go into that situation so like that remember you as a deeply observe rather than bound to your thought bound to the time related to past and future dreaming and in that imagination and don't go into this illusion and develop the moment of existence moment by moment moment by moment, whatever situation come be a person to go with that situation rather than don't tell i am like this person don't allow other person to tell oh he is like this person that mean you losing the power of the mind when another person can recognize you are what kind of person that mean you lose your power of humanity you become kind of like a puppet anybody can push the remote and you you change according to other person and if other person know how you get angry if other person know how you get mad if other person know how you make uh, become happy you are you are become you are useless that's mean what because you you trap in a model is kind of like a, you are like a robot and then when they want to make you angry they know which button to push and then you react according to that and according to whenever the other person know how to make you happy and they can get whatever out of you you don't know so then remember yourself don't be like that always be a person according to the moment according to the situation you do your best with the good heart that's it that is what you have to master according to the moment and according to the situation 
you do your best without any condition without any limitation for the the good when you come to a point to be uh, develop a behavior like that way you get out of the timeline psychological time you always become a normal person when you become a normal person that is where you find the real happiness in your life that is where you experience the meaning of living and when it come to that moment there is a wisdom going to arise out of that living that wisdom that knowledge is the most important knowledge why because it never going to bound you to the time or the memory it always moment of that sensual perception make clear and in that clarity you start to recognize how things change in that change you not bound to anything to hold you experience without holding you experience without grasping you experience without harboring that experience is the the experience of liberation so then remember yourself it is on you can do by yourself it is only you can do it for you this all dharma this everything can help you but you have to decide what kind of help you want if you want to be the same person then you need something else different kind of help but this kind of help always going to make you completely be make you free from the the self image that you carry within yourself when it come to that freedom that release remember that is where you become formless shapeless that is where you become imagineless timeless being and that is where you experience the liberation or the ultimate bliss of nibbana so with that i bless upon everyone with this good practice may all of you be well happy and peaceful may no harm come to you may no difficulties come to you may no problems come to you may you also have the patience courage understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties in your life during this time period may everyone stay healthy and safe and finally may all of you attain supreme bliss of nibbana sabbhitiyo vajjantu sabbaro go vinasatu mate bhavattantarayo sukhi digayuko bhava ittavatacham mehi sampadam punya sampadam सबे देवादंत सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया सबे भूतानुमोदंत सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया सबे सत्तानुमोदंत सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया इदम मे पुण्य कमंगा सवकया वंगो तु सब दुखा पमुंचतु